the kangaroo, the boomerang, the didgeridoo, and of course, the iconic opera house right behind me here in Sydney. The things you expect to see when you come to Australia. But then there are the things that you're not going to find in the brochures. They don't even exist in the guidebooks. And those are what I'm going to show you. I'm Peter Greenberg, and welcome to my hidden gems of Australia. Most travels to Australia start with the harbour city of Sydney. With four and a half million people, Sydney is Australia's biggest and most cosmopolitan metropolis. Now, not surprisingly, Sydney is a city full of icons, and perhaps the most famous, or at least the one most identified with the city, is the Sydney Opera House. Designed by Danish architect John Utzon, the Opera House is made to mimic a ship at full sail. Its roof is made up of more than one million tiles, and some sections weigh up to 15 tons. It's definitely not a hidden gem, but guess what? It contains one. But here's a little known fact. You know, most people will come to the Opera House and take an organized tour or they even attend a performance. But on certain days of the week, if you call ahead and you get up early in the morning, they'll let you actually get up on stage and conduct. How cool is that? Another Sydney destination that most travelers don't see, in fact, mostly the locals go there, is the Taronga Zoo. But the great hidden gem at this zoo isn't that they have one of the best collections of native and exotic animals. They've got more than 2,600 animals on 52 acres. No, the hidden gem here is if you ask, you can arrange to have an up-close experience with Australian wildlife led by those who know the animals best, the zookeepers. Sort of a different way to be a zoo when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Nice, warm, cuddly, affectionate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now to the koalas. Sure. You even get a chance to meet some of Australia's most famous furry residents. Well, this tree is actually a browse from a eucalyptus tree. Now, eucalyptus is the only plant that these guys will eat. There's around 700 species of them, of eucalypt, um, and it's basically to try and wake them up. Oh, that's a nice little pose for us. Hey, trust me, this is as close as you want to go. As cuddly as they look, you see these claws? Don't touch. But uh, it's a pretty cool experience. Come back, okay, Peter. Here we go, here we go. Peter. One more time. Every time I go to Sydney, I revisit one of my favorite cities. And when I do that, I also revisit one of my favorite hidden gems. So, fasten your seatbelt. But the best way to see Sydney is from the air on Sydney seaplanes. But it's not just seeing Sydney from the air, it's where this plane is about to take me. And that's a true hidden gem. My route takes me first over the Sydney Harbour Bridge, the Opera House, and Bondi Beach. But then you also see some of the lesser visited parts of the city from the best view. Scope out the beaches along the northern shore to find a beach without any crowds and go there later. But my main destination on this flight is the real hidden gem, a restaurant called Pete's Bite, way up on the Hawkesbury River. Now you won't find Pete's Bite in the guidebooks, and in fact, they don't even have a brochure. The key is, well, how do you find it? It's about 45 minutes away from Sydney if you could drive here, by the way, which you can't. It's about 20 minutes away as the crow flies or as that flies. That's right, it's only accessible by boat or seaplane, but believe me, it's worth it. So if truth be told, Tammy, I've been coming here for what? We started here 30 years ago, so you've been coming here a long time. Long time, <laughs> and yet not that many people know about it. We haven't advertised at all. All our advertising has been done word of mouth. Plus, you've got to be able to get here. Well, you can't. I just had a phone call today. Who wanted? He said, is this Pete's spot? I said, yes. He said, I'm driving there right now. I said, <laughs> no, 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 you're, you're not. not. <laughs> Don't you? Once you're here, you're going to want to spend some time here. It's not just the location, but the food, which is delivered each day by local fishermen right to their dock. Pete's is known for its extravagant lunch, five courses to be exact, each made from locally sourced ingredients. And one of the trademarks of the place, the food comes with entertainment. No, they can't take that away from me. Now, if you want to truly experience a different side of Australia, then hop on another plane and travel south to Tasmania, the only island state in the country. 
When most people travel to Australia for the first time, you know where they go? Well, they go to Sydney or to Melbourne. No big surprises there. But where do the smart Australians travel? Simple, they head south to Tasmania. Just 150 miles from the mainland, Tasmania is one of the world's largest islands and also one of the least known and least visited. In my book, that's the compelling reason to go. That's right, you go when nobody else does. And once you go, it's an even more compelling reason to return. One place that can't be missed is Freysonet National Park on Tasmania's eastern coast. Freysonet is a peninsula complete with granite mountains, white beaches, coastal dunes, dry eucalyptus forests, and some of the world's rarest animals. Or take a quad bike for a wild ride. Brochures might claim it's off the beaten path, but guess what? That's the beauty of the place. There is no beaten path. There's a locally owned company called All for Adventure that prides itself on taking you to secluded beaches and forests that are totally inaccessible for most travelers. Wondering where to stay while you're there? Well, you sleep in the heart of Freysonet National Park at Sapphire Freysonet. But you better get up early. It's one of the best places on the peninsula to catch the sunrise over the Hazards Mountains. One of the great things about Tasmania is the quality of its food. Anywhere you go, you find great organic boutique farms. But here's the cool thing. You not only get to eat the food, you get to learn how to make it. Like here at Grandview Cheesery, it's Tasmania's only sheep milk organic farm. You meet the animals and then you'll learn the fine art of cheesemaking. Grandview is run by cheesemaker Diane Ray, who left the corporate world to run the farm. Diane and her girls make cheese they call Blue Bayou and Euphoria. And if you can get over the attempted cuteness of the names, you'll soon discover why their cheese is so special. Now the cool thing about this particular farm is that people can come and volunteer and work here. Yeah, they can. And it's called Woof. Cool. The woofing system, yeah. It's, Which means? It's WW Willing, OOF, Willing Workers, workers on, on Organic, organic farms. farms. I yeah. Got it. Okay, cool. The great thing about this program is you can stay for a day or stay for months, have all the cheese you can eat, and then try your hand at cheese making. Hey, even I can do it. So, what we're going to get you to do is pierce these cheeses for us. Now, what is the whole idea of piercing the cheese? Okay, this is a blue cheese. If you've got moisture, and it drains. you've got mold there, yeah. it starts to grow. Wow. So what we need to do is literally bring air into the middle of the cheese. The moldier the better. Exactly. So Cheryl here is going to show you. There's a bit of an arc to it. You so, go, girl. Oh, anyway, I see. Down every centimeter and across it. Okay. Oh, wow. You're much better at this than I am. <laughs> now, on. when this is over, do you put a label on it saying pierced by Peter? <laughs> no? We could. We could, you we should, could. yes. The signature model. Here's another Tassie specialty, the oyster. Tasmanian oysters are nothing short of amazing. And here's the best part. A few of the oyster farms actually let you get out of the water and enjoy an oyster straight from the source. If you're an oyster lover, and I am, don't just eat them at the restaurant, you go to where the oysters are, and that's Barilla Bay. Behind me, 10 million oysters out there, and we're gonna go get some. The plan of attack is simple. You get up early in the morning before high tide. You come out here by tractor and go into the water. You get your oysters, you shuck them, and then you eat. And then you eat some more. That's good. That's good? Yeah. Really good. Now you have to wash down all those oysters and cheese, and guess what? You're in luck. Tasmania's cool climate means it produces wines that you can't find anywhere else in Australia, and for that matter, difficult to find anywhere else in the world. They make everything from sparkling wines to Pinot Noirs. My suggestion? Stop at Freysonet Wines. Winemaker Claudio Redenti will show you how he makes the wine, all of which are produced right here on the estate from grape to glass. Because in Tasmania, the local food and wine scene isn't just about the final product. It's the artistry and technique that sets it apart as one of the nation's real hidden gems. Now every city will tell you they got a great underground art scene. But in Hobart, they're not kidding. Literally 56 feet underground. It's called the Museum of Old and New Art. Mona is a museum that defies convention. 
From its subterranean galleries to the tennis court entryway, Mona is far from your typical white-walled museum. And if you think the outside of the museum is unusual, then you need to look closely at the exhibits. Mona has more than 300 works, and there's absolutely nothing traditional or stuffy about anything here. We're talking about some really wild interactive art, like the Pulse Room. Forget going to your doctor for a checkup. This is much more fun. You see, you come in here, you put your hands on this, and then guess what happens? Your heartbeat, your pulse rate, is reflected in over 180 lights. Now, I can't tell you if I'm healthy, but it looks pretty cool. One of my favorite exhibits down here is something called Bitfall. You hear that noise behind me? That's water dropping from the ceiling, but it's not just water, it's words. The top 10 Google search words on Australian Google in water. Talk about performance art. I've been coming to Australia since I'm 25, and this country never ceases to surprise me. And that's really the beauty of this place, because while it has great history, it's constantly changing. And what that means is an almost endless supply of authentic, genuine experiences, not to mention some pretty incredible hidden gems. I'm Peter Greenberg, and thanks for watching.